Hi there, it's Strutter, and today is March the 19th, 2013, and this is another follow-up video to the divergence between price and demand for silver. And I'm going to go over a few variations, and this video is not going to be as polished as perhaps the last couple were on this topic. Um, I've been analyzing and collecting the data for well over a day now, and uh, I'm just, <laughs> just interested in getting the uh, information out there and I uh, won't be as polished as some of my other videos have been. Um, you're looking right now at the silver price versus demand, of course, going back to 2000, and if you haven't watched my previous videos on this topic and you're interested on it, I'll put the link down below. Some parts of this video won't make sense if you haven't seen the previous parts. Also, I'm going to put a link to Endless Mountain's follow-up video on this where he um, peer-reviewed my work and uh, confirmed the divergence himself. It has been done by other um, YouTubers and other bloggers and such as well, but uh, I can't link to them all here. Uh, Endless Mountain's video was very good and his analysis is excellent, so I recommend you checking that out if you haven't already. And I got some of the ideas for this video from his video as well as I uh, found the um, Silver Maples data from Endless Mountain. It was actually on Wikipedia. I didn't think to check Wikipedia, but that's where it was. So first of all, this is the original chart that I did um, a couple of weeks ago now, really. Um, we, of course, have to project March's data because the US Mint hasn't released all the data for March yet because March isn't over. But um, I just ran the numbers again, and indeed we are still projecting to uh, have a total uh, January, February, and March um, sales for Eagles of 15 million, which of course will be an all-time record. Um, so that hasn't changed, and this chart of course hasn't changed. This is the same as it was last time. Uh, but there of course is uh, analysis we can do by going back a further 10 years. And what this does is it shows us that the correlation is more or less um, ringing true. You can take this further back, of course, to 1987 because they started selling eagles in late 1986. Um, but yes, the correlation does um, follow along very nicely and continues all the way up until 2012. And the divergence is, of course, here in 2013. Um, so that's that. Um, yeah, the correlation continues back very clearly and then we can go on to look at gold eagles sales and yeah this is a little bit wonky um, I'll show you the silver eagle again correlation is really clear in gold the correlation is not as clear uh, we still obviously are trending upward in both price and demand and we did pull back in 2012 in both price and demand and now we see that demand is increasing in 2013 whereas the price, of course, continues to decrease in 2013. So the correlation is there, and the divergence is there in gold as well. It's just much harder to see. Gold, of course, is, um, you know, the demand is, is kind of wonky. Central banks are involved in buying and selling gold. We do see <laughs> strange anomalies, but overall the correlation is intact, and the divergence in 2013 is there. And then I want to go on to something quite interesting, which is silver maples. And as we can see, um, the demand has pulled back in 2012, as the price did. But unfortunately, we don't have any data for 2013 yet, because the Royal Canadian Mint only publishes their sales data several months after it actually happens. So... Um, we can still check to see if there's a correlation between price and demand, and indeed there is. We can go back to 2000, and uh, the correlation is quite strong and quite obvious. It's much better than the gold correlation is, and uh, it's, it's pretty pronounced. Demand has increased greatly as the maple got more well-known and accepted, so as you see, the it's sort of we have a crossover here in, in a greater spike in demand than in price because the silver maple is a newer product than the silver eagle. It hasn't been on the market for nearly as long. So um, it has just sort of in recent years become more and more acceptable to uh, worldwide silver investors. And so you see a, 
quite a, a larger uh, move in demand than in price, but it's quite obvious to look at it, and you can look at the data and the numbers themselves if you like, and um, the, the correlation is quite strong. And like I said, we don't know the numbers for the first three months of 2013 yet, but we do know that the Royal Canadian Mint has had to ration silver maples due to unprecedented demand. So are we expecting something like this? Or are we expecting something like this, like we saw on the Silver Eagles chart? We won't know for a few months, but of course I'm going to keep my eye on this and see what happens. Just as an explanation, on this chart the price is divided by three so that it fits on the same chart. And the demand is measured in millions of maples sold. So back here, um, very few, less than a million maples sold altogether. And here, well into the 20 million range and higher. So, uh, like I said, there's been a great increase in demand for silver maples in the last five years or so. In summary, the demand and price of silver maples has a strong correlation, as does with eagles. We just don't know the 2013 early data yet at all. So we don't know if the divergence is visible in maples or not. In gold, we see the divergence, but the correlation over the years is not as strong between price and demand. And of course, on this chart, the demand and price are taken back to 1990, so we can see the correlation is indeed a valid one. And this is really what we're talking about here. I'm going to keep my eye on this as new data becomes available, and if you have any suggestions for a follow-up on this, put it in the comment section below or email me directly. Talk to you soon.